um, doing our thing. I hear a little echo. Thank you, D. I don't know what be going on with you in that. I'm telling you, it's over here, the heat map. As soon as I get on the screen <laughs> and put on YouTube, resources are oh, oh, Touchdown, Alabama, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, we're back. Howie Lennox, shout out to UGA. Go UGA. I know they just got a touchdown. Alabama just got a touchdown. I know. Don't remind me. Um, been a, uh, a, a pretty um, good week. We have been busy this week. Then we do, did we do, we did three streams this week. Four, five, five streams. Stream number five. This is stream number five. The we did the stream with uh Rodrigue and um uh, uh Thompa. that's his name in bit. Uh, but it is Rudy. Uh that was a five hour stream. You know, I could have kept going, but I know the production engineer in the back will fall asleep on me, or she'll just she'll just cut it off in the mid mid sentence and be like. What else you got to say? When then you talked about everything. What nothing else to talk about? In this particular instance, our guest had the sleepy eye because the production was up. So it was two in the morning, but what and I? Uh, I had nothing to do with that. So I don't know why I get all the <laughs> get muted. Get muted if you want to. Get muted with your buttery bowl. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. But it was definitely I was not, saying, uh, what's my up? Fault. What's up? That's I, was hanging. I was hanging real super chat. Uh, give a shout out to everybody that is in the chat right now. Um, what's going on? Keep it techie. Q4, I hope that answered your question. Man, what time is it in Africa right now? You're in GMT, in the wee wee hours in the morning. See Casey, Kanjo, what's up? L Dunn, what's going on? Q4 again. Uh, Black Professor Arts. I don't know why I want to call you Black Professor Arts. This just sounds like more appealing to me. But Professor Black Ops, I, I get it. Um, and then Tanya Vaughn, what's going on? So in case you missed it, and we'll run down it again. Tuesday we had the stream with Keep It, not Keep It Tech. We had the stream with Rudy and Rodrigue. Then we came back and had a stream on Thursday with Amy Rich, who hopped into the Slack group, who uh, put in more information, put in more information about jobs as well, too. And then... We had the stream this morning on uh, tech stocks and jobs where we talked about AI, relationships, sex robots. We talked about uh, 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 vertical uh, e uh, electric ver electric vertical uh, um, vehicles. We talked about. Uh, did you know the maximum amount on, amount in a 401k that that you could that you could put into a 401k? The number is 290. I think it goes up next year to 305. Uh, just a FYI, um, and a company in a 401k um, after the 290, like you say, if you make 400 thousand, they can't match uh, you as far as an investment. So 290 is the cutoff, so you should be doing a Roth IRA. Yep. Um, we also talked about security in the metaverse. Um, and we got some more stuff to, to bring up. We also talked about uh, high, highly compensated employees. The numbers start at 130. I think that number is a myth, but whatever. And then we also talked about the ultra wealthy, um, which they considered, excuse me, 10 million. All right. And that was just a quick summary. 
it was hopped over to keep it techie and uh shout out to keep it techie in the in the chat do you whatever you're doing in the background we can hear you um uh shout out to uh your actual goal of nine thousand i didn't get a chance to say that on it on that show but i did tell you in the back but i didn't give you your flowers in the front to get your flowers now right and i'm trying to get my little soundboard to work but it ain't working see i got my little soundboard that's not you don't want to hook up the microphone i don't think i need the microphone but that's okay the you don't want to follow directions that's typical engineer why do I need a microphone for it to work? That don't make no sense. I don't know because it it, it might trigger something. Who knows? But I would hook it up like it in the in the instruction manual. And you're then the, start and you're not the boss of me either. But, but I am. I don't know why you want to have this um debate in front of the people, but I am the boss of you. No, that didn't work. Nothing. Yeah, they did nothing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not hooked up like it's supposed to be. Yeah, they did nothing. <sighs> Let me turn it off so we don't get no no accident. You people. know what? I'm going. I'm just gonna get some straightening on this right now, Professor Black. Off, <laughs> get off my neck right now. <laughs> Get off my neck right now. Uh -oh. I had it working. Uh -oh. I had it working. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Got some sound. I had the thing working. I got some sound. Say something again, Dion. Can you hear it? Okay. I don't know what that is. It's not so, very loud, whatever it is. That's a kiss. It's not very loud. Okay, hold on. No, Tam is over there. Uh, I literally on her desk. It's like four laptops. Her monitor is like this. I have a forty-nine inch monitor. I have a forty-nine and inch monitor. I got room. one laptop that's hooked up to one side of the screen. I have another part of my other uh, monitor that's hooked up to my laptop and this one. And then I have another monitor over here that so I can see. So I got everything going on. The and then game, none of the things on. that she buys hooks up to her computer she need all these micro usb little thingies and none of them ever work so she doesn't check the connections i do yes i need you to take a time out go on take go on take a time out G grab your, it's five o'clock so everybody should have their sips so I, i'm probably need you to have you some cognac professor black ops don't take this from her don't take this uh, like 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 the when uh what's his name dave Chappelle was on um meet the clumps you done talked about me enough now boy <laughs> it's time for reggie to put some straightness on that huh oh it's definitely time for you you have a nap this is cutting in town nap nap time so she's gonna be um super goofy right now because it's time for a nap nap. That was my laughter. Whatever. Are you going to give us an intro or are you going to keep playing with that <gasps> thing? Oh, oh, goodness. I'm so glad. It's, it's not loud, though. Okay, that's cool. It's only going to crack you up because we can't, the people can't hear it. Can you put a, um, a eight in the chat if you guys can hear her little stuff in the background? Yeah, let me know if you can hear it. Go ahead and drop an eight in the chat. I hear, but I'm not gonna drop an eight. I know you just gonna be over there cracking yourself up. It's okay. It is. It is. It's okay. It I definitely is. is. What's up, Casey Native? All right, so let's get cracking. All right, so okay, so they can hear you. Yeah, yep. So um we're women in Linux. If you don't know, now you know. Uh, if you don't know who we are, I and Tam, and on the person up there is D. Um, she's the person that uh, probably gets on everybody's nerves every week. You know how that go. You know how she. I swear you stay trying me. <laughs> you you know stay trying me. You know how she do. You know. You stay trying me. 
I'm a nice lady. Yet, you still picked. All right. Um, in terms of <laughs> in terms of uh, where you can find us, you can find us on womeninlinux.org. Uh, when you get there, if you want to know or want to connect with us, hit connect. Meet us in Slack. Drop in. Hit the uh, put in your email address. It'll connect you up to our Slack group. Or you can come in, you can say hi, whatever, whatever. Yeah, it's really low. Oh, that sucks. I told you. Can you move? Are you still have it hooked up to that speaker? Yeah. Bring the speaker closer to your... Um... It is. It's sitting on my laptop. Let me nice. see. Well, I, don't, I don't know where my microphone is at. Let me try this. That's okay. better. Okay, so the microphone is down here. All right, cool. Well, we're going to give some claps. Oh, that's much better. Oh, yes, yeah, right. much better. <laughs> Give right. a hand clap for Tam. Get me together. Yes, get me together, Tam. We yeah, so proud of you. I know. We this so ain't looking good for us in Alabama. They they just going all over the place with them. I'm I'm not turn that off. That's gonna make me mad. Um, and if you want to shop, you can hit the shop button and hit all products. Um, you can get uh, onesies. I'm going to get, everybody should send D a onesie, the uh, jersey bodysuit here, the women in Linux edition, if it fine jersey bodysuit, everybody send D a bodysuit, a uh, little jersey You know, I love a good onesie now. I'm yeah. not going to hate with a good onesie. I think you're a little too big for that one, but you know. I am probably too big. I prefer not to have anything that snaps right in that place but i do like the ones with the long legs <laughs> why you prefer not to have anything to snap right it's, uh, it's uncomfortable it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not the, that's not the business that's not the business but if it, it has long legs and it it goes it got pants to my onesie i'm all in, <laughs> I'm all in. you don't want that to happen <laughs> i don't want that <laughs> All right. No, ma'am. <laughs> and next up, uh, if you want to donate, you can always donate with your time. You can also donate on YouTube as well. You can send a super chat. You know what? I think D got to fix that. They took our super chat away. D, you got to fix that. We can't get our... Well, you know, you, YouTube is giving me the business. It's giving me the blues. But I, I if I could take just a few of some of some time off to get everything squared away... There's I no such thing as no time off. You need to hire. You need to hire. They're not going to They not gonna get it fixed. I got to fix it. All right. So you can donate with your time. You can donate with PayPal. Uh, we'll set up a cash app. I don't know if I want to do cash app. No, just so, use our donation donation link in the chat. And then I want to do something else. It won't be Zelle either. I want to do something else. And you can also find us uh, at meetup.com forward slash women in Linux. We have a virtual meetup every week on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, they are posted. The replays are posted on our YouTube channel, but sometimes... The stuff that we discuss, we don't want everybody to know about. So make sure that you show up um, so you won't miss anything. Because it just might be your time to just get some things off your chest. Yep. Um, as far as um, meetup.com goes, like I said before, we're probably going to switch up that link. So that way we know who's coming and who's not coming to the meetup. Also helps with our analytics. Also helps you to know like when we decide on changing um uh uh the time or we want to cancel or something like that you get a notification um about that and so forth so that's that's what that's what we're gonna work on shout out to changing the meetup right all right well, now, it's not being oh well you did say you want to do a separate link this time yeah i just want to do i want to do a new link every time though not keep the same one because the what what ends up happening is is um you'll get the link and people keep going to that same link over and over again and then when it gets when it gets canceled nobody gets the notifications so i want to set it up where people can get the notifications 
Um, I don't think that has anything to do with our meetup link, but that's another conversation. But it, it did get com confusing when we kept changing the links before in the week. But again, that's another conversation. Yeah, um, people want to subscribe to the meetup channel. We've been having so, the same link for five years now. It's <laughs> posted. Like, in yeah. the All right, so let's get cracking. All right, so there was an article I saw earlier on... Um, on um on linkedin where they were talking about the ceos are selling off their stocks right um and i i'm not an investor or anything and i wonder like as a ceo with that much money or that much stock or something like that is it do you have to sell it off because of tax purposes or is it, you know what what ends up happening there when you when it comes to the sell off or you you know, is that something that gets looked at from a tax perspective? I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worth, you know, billions. I don't know. And then they could buy, they might be buying something. They might be buying a home. They might want right. to be liquidating it for their kids' uh, education. It can be so many reasons. They yeah. might just be, you know, doing some estate planning like we were talking uh, about. Oh, yeah, we did take talk about some jobs and moving some stuff around. And then it's like, you know, when you get hired, they give you all this stock and you have stock in the company. But then you're like, I want to see that money in my bank account. I'm trying to cash that thing out. and, and, and Possibly, maybe. A maybe. little bit before I do something with it. Maybe or they're moving it into an estate or whatever. Uh, but the CEO from Microsoft, uh, I, I guess, is it, how you say his name? Sataya, Sataya, not sure. Nadella. Yeah. What'd you say? Satya. Satya. A Satya and a Satya. Nadella sells half his shares in the company. Then you had Elon Musk, uh, 10 top $10 billion. And then you have Jeff Bezos sells $2.5 billion. That was back in May. Um, and then this one here. Uh, the the chair uh, a, a AMC the CEO of AMC sold 625 shares of his stock right and so oh yeah and then Mark uh, sold who he's worth 127 billion has unloaded shares nearly every business day according to filers in the SEC security he sold 19.4 million shares worth 2.8 billion dollars. Uh, and then they're probably using eight, that money to invest in something else. Over the past eight months through through Wednesday, about 90% of the sales were, were made by his philanthropic and advocacy organization and the Shan uh, Zuckerberg Initiative. And what's that? Oh, My sound effects. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, again, they're selling off their stocks um, and... Um, uh, I guess allowing the retail investor to catch up on that, right? All right, so let's get into this government contract. Keep keep it taking and I were talking about this. Um, I'm gonna have Eric Coffee come on um, here pretty soon. Um, we I just haven't had a chance to have him on just yet, but let's get into it. All right, so inside our Slack, we have a um, a, a list of um, stuff from the DOD to talk about these government contracts. It's like what's 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 out there, what's being um, what's being put out there. How can you apply for them and so forth, right? So, coal engineering has won a nine hundred and fifty-seven million dollar fixed contract price to provide cyber uh, training services to the army. We're going to clap that up because every time I see uh, cyber training services, I see an opportunity um, for for you to uh, go in and start being a actual um, being a person of, um, say, a freelancer or someone that can help create uh, create um, actual um, content in order to train. 
um and this is already inside of slack but if you want to post this inside of um uh, the channel here I'm, i'll get this to you on the back end all right so another thing um and you can see that here 957 million and it says the company is based out of florida and we'll be providing training event support as well as architecture development and maintenance for cybersecurity training systems the contract includes uh support for blue team now if you're not familiar with blue team i've showed you this before um and i'll pull this up on sans.org or whoever right i pull up sans.org and we'll go some other places but the contract includes support for blue team cybersecurity per personnel who work to identify vulnerabilities and protect core assets. The work locations and funding have yet to be determined, but the work has been estimated completion on November the 29th of 2019. Five bids were received for the procurement, according to the Army Contracting Command. The contract is one of several large procurements awarded by the Army in recent months, including $192 million $192.6 million contract for training simulation and management software that was awarded to coal engineering the same month the army awarded 2.4 billion dollar contract to provide it services to its national cyber range complex that contract has a 10-year scope and 14 companies was in that contract including lockheed martin Boeing, which I talked about earlier, Command Post Technologies, and Axiologic, right? Axiologic Solutions. So when we look at these contracts that they're winning, there are people that actually, as as freelancers, or I should say, as um, as smaller companies, can come in and get um, onto some of these contracts again through relationships or what have you um there there are plenty of 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 things of people that can that can get into this actual uh into these actual contracts right so um let's go back up um and look at what coal engineering services and see what kind of job they got All right. Uh, let me close that. All right, now let's go careers. And now when we get over here to careers, let's explore open positions. All right. So let me see. There we go. All right. So now you can see like here the open. So here go. We're starting to see intelligence training specialist team lead um let's go in here and put training as a keyword i'm sure it's gonna pull back a lot of things but let's pull that up all right subcontract administrator four so look they already looking for subcontractors and this was posted yesterday so in here i see what you want to see uh development and attainment of organization goals and objectives and you, okay they're looking for a subcontractor somebody who does subcontracting experience so they're looking for somebody to come in and help bring in subcontractors to the projects that they want because they probably don't carry a lot of people on their um on their um in their company let's see oh uh, it closed out let me go back let's go back training All right, so we got software design, intelligence, data center, cloud applications, installation technician, uh, program site lead. So they don't have a lot yet. They probably haven't identified one, the money, or how much they're going to put out there. But while we're here, let's just look up Linux. And then I'll look up cloud as well, too.
So as you can see, test integration, data cloud, just like I say, false line in line, a system administrator too, a game developer as well too. So let's come here. Um, see, install patches and upgrades for Windows, Solaris, and Microsoft. Uh, Bill operates and manages VMware, Kubernetes, Windows, Linux, set up and manage web and data. You're going to need to have your, uh, this right here is your security plus, um, must be 8570 compliant. You take that, you get, you take that when you get there. Um, here's your security plus, and then they like for you to have the RxCE, the RxCSA, uh, come to you. Understand, oh, I'm surprised they want you to understand this. I mean, still running this versus LDAP, uh, DNS, uh, creation, experience with creation and maintenance of user accounts and to include limitation of capability, network security, Nigels and Grafana, must experience with resolution of problems, hardware, software, and able to lift and move equipment. This is a this is a Linux admin, no doubt. This is just a system administrator right there. That's a pure system administrator for on-prem stuff. Um, so that's what that one is. All right. So the next one. The IRS plans to award $2.6 billion app development contract in Q1 for fiscal 2023. $2.6 billion app that the IRS is, is, is uh, building. There was, a, there was a law that was passed. I don't know if you saw it that I think the IRS can now text you. They can text you uh, when you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me look that up real quick. Let's see. Let's see. IRS. Or is it people that IRS can text you? That's like the bill collector calling you and asking you to confirm your date of birth and your social security number. Let me see. It was something that came out. The IRS or bill collectors can text you. I saw that. I was like, man. Who's going to answer the text? Like, I don't believe you, IRS. Send that stuff it's snail right mail here. like you've been doing. It is right here. Debt collectors. is debt collectors. Debt collectors can now text, email, and DM you on social media. Okay, now I saw that. And they still don't <laughs> get the gas <laughs> Oh, Oh, you going to tweet? Well, tweet us and email us because you owe us a you owe us a debt. Ooh, I know some people that owe me now. I know some people that owe me now. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> oh, that's so disrespectful. And it's so rude. Pay your student loans. You're behind four months, but you can tweet. No, tweet us like, this we money. see you in Mexico, but have you paid your bill though? <laughs> Block. See, Casey, we see you getting your pedicure, but we Block need for ministry. you to go. We need for you, but you need to go ahead and get on over here and pay this bill, child. Mm -mm. Block we ministry. About, we about to cut your lights off. Because <laughs> disrespectful. <laughs> So I'll just let you know what's happening out here. <laughs> As they say, they say it go down in the DM. Mm -mm. You better put those. You, if you want them not to do that, you better get on the spam registry and uh, go and register your number so those people won't be calling and embarrassing you like that. <laughs> you are in Tulum with oh three semesters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you went to Loom, but you owe three semesters. That's right. You be like, stay out my business. That's <laughs> all in my business right now. Tweets. <laughs> and ooh, you know, so look, so let's let's talk about it, right? So what is that? What is that? What does that mean for places like um 
uh what was that we were using before that you can brand you can you can tweet out across well you can send a message across multiple social media platforms hootsuite yeah hootsuite so a place like hootsuite that find a part like like i'm a bill collector i got a hootsuite connect now i'm gonna now i'm gonna go out and, and tweet the person and be like oh yeah yeah so let me tweet let me tweet them let me hit their dm let me hit it. Let, let me let me hit them up on Instagram. Let me hit them up on Facebook. I'm just gonna hit them up everywhere. Hit them up. I'm gonna get straight embarrassed. So I'm posting the um, national do not call registry for the people. You can share your screen. Oh, hold on. You know I got a whole bunch of stuff up. Give me a minute. Let me move something over. Oh no, I can do it this way. Oh well, you, you posted it in, in the chat. How rude. People are Jack collector can now text, email, and DM you. Mm-mm, no ma'am. What's your DMs looking like? Your DMs be cracking. No, them bills. You better put yourself on private. <laughs> oh, goodness. No, Let's them see. bill collectors. Or do I did get that together? All right, the IRS plans to release the request for the quotation for a 2.6 billion application development contract in June of 2022. Now's the time to get in. You late, really, because they're making this announcement. And the award for the contract will be the first quarter of 2023. Enterprise Development Operation EDOS contract will bring in 400 plus systems in the IRS application development portfolio under one vehicle and while enhancing development modernization and then and enhancement services and reducing operations and maintenance edos came out of the expectation that massive legislation will require the irs to modernize assembly code based systems didn't i tell you people are still running assembly code dating back to the 1960s so if you can read assembly and learn how to translate what was going on into a cloud solution, you know I do. Um, here we go. While delivering new web services and cloud-based solutions, according to the slide deck from the agency industry day Thursday. And you could probably find that slide deck out there too. Um, okay, do you want me to put this U.S. call register up real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I need to go and hit that. Casey, she see Casey says she she go and re ups for this registry. So do I, because people get embarrassed trying to call me. Now the extended warranty people. I don't know who gets the extended warranty people, but they call me every day at the same time for different numbers. So they robocall. So whatever software they got is a beast. It's a beast. That's the slap. I don't know who the extended warranty people are, but they are they are on they on your heels. I don't even have a call. What are you extending? <laughs> We're gonna have to get you a new one. All right, so back to the contract. So scope enhancements will be defined in the modern, modernized applications in parallel with executing annual legislation and demands and supporting tax uh, filing seasons. Means tax filing seasons reads that the Professional Services Council event description. The level of effort for this agreement is anticipated to have a total contract ceiling of 2.6 billion over seven years who wants to go work and, and come do work with the irs to get them modernized oh yeah and you don't stop yeah contractors will be expected to provide across six task areas project program management agile portfolio management dme i'm not sure what that's supposed to be Sustainment and OEM. So once they get up, somebody got to sustain it. 
upgrades and configuration management. Here you go, Ansible. Uh, here you go with uh, Terraform. Here you go with Understanding Cloud and transition services. AD methods will include Agile and DevOps. We're back. This, again, this is the stuff, and this is supposed to be over the next, what, seven to 10 years? Additional skill requirements, uh, contractor, uh, additional contractor skill requirements include experience in fraud detection tools, identifying tax fraud schemes, daily using network analytics, and detecting tax related ID theft. So, sounds like analytics, sounds like machine learning, sounds like AI. Sounds like they're going to be under, understanding that. I wouldn't be surprised if they introduce some blockchain into that as well, too. Right? We're going to have to go do some some dumpster diving, D, on the IRS. They're moving from assembly over to cloud. So this sounds like a good, a good tool like Rust or something like that will be in. All right, next up. Agencies seek to double the one point, the one billion allotted to technology modernization fund for projects. Double it. The technology modernization fund board has received an upward of two billion in funding requests for from agencies in 2021, more than double the amount appropriated for the American Rescue Act. And this is came out November the 17th. As a result, a whole lot of money. As a result, only a small subset of the of those proposals will receive the TMF fund or technology modernization fund investments when the board announces another round of funding, likely next year, uh, said executive director Raylan Young. The TMF board has already looked at dozen of proposals and awarded money, awarded money to seven, distributed incrementally as they complete milestones in September. All right, let's find out who they are. You can see the scale and the pace and the size and the number of proposals has increased in the last six months. Um, but again, they're looking for zero trust architecture. Um, we, I talk about this all the time. Three agencies received the TMF funds for their zero trust project last year. There are probably similar pro uh, project proposals remaining that can't be funded since Sanjay Gupta, Chief Technology Officer at the Small Business Administration and the alternate board member, right? So zero trust. Although the cybersecurity executive order issued in May may have been refocused. Let's look at that. And you wondering like, why am I talking about this? This is your money. This is your money, this is our money. Um, this is your data. This is your protection. You all file taxes. You want to know wh what's going on with the security of your, of your social security number? They already been hacked. What's that look like? Right? Um, Custom Border Protection received funding for TMF around 2018 to retire mainframe of its automated commercial environment, ACE. ACE processed $2.7 trillion in goods in 2021, but its interface still needs modern, modernization or modernizing for uh, compatibility with the CB, CB, CBP cloud. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's go over here and look at this. Technology Fund support awarded to seven new agency IT projects. Um, let's look at those projects. Let's see. Oh, it's blurry. Hopefully it'll come in a little bit. I can read it though. The Department of Education for Zero Trust, the General Service Administration for Adv Advancing Zero Trust, um, General Service Administration for Login.gov, General Service Administration for Max.gov, that's what it looks like, Department of Homeland Security for Southwest Border Technology, OPM, or Office of Personnel Management, Zero Trust, and Classified, Project Details Classified. It's classified, <laughs> right? And they go into a little bit more information there. Uh, all right, next up, um, these the SBA working towards a trust algorithm for zero trust architecture. That's allotted 
And this was probably just a spinoff of that, of that last link. All right. So I just wanted to show you like where the billions and where the money is going, because when we look at this, there are, um, there are government contracts or awards that you can, uh, you know, compete against, you know, to get, but you need a team and you need relationships. And so we'll get Eric Coffey to come on to talk about this. Um, I, I need to reach out to him. I haven't been able to attend some of his meetings, um, but we're going we're gonna to get to it. All right. Oh, I was looking at this. Just to serve. All right. So now let's keep going. All right. So let's talk about that blue team that we were talking about earlier. All right. So if we hit up on SANS and we go to the training roadmap, and you can look here and see it's color coordinated. Right. So here's the blue team. This is your start. And then you move into the red team. And then if you want to go green team, here's green. And here's the cloud security. Congratulations to me for getting my cloud security cert. Um, I, I've, I did the test yesterday and I got my, got my cloud security cert. And uh, devs, uh, uh, not DevSecOps, but automation and DevSecOps. I'm probably going to go back and take the one for DevSecOps and um containers and kubernetes probably go back and take this one and then do uh container i probably do, i would like to do all of these and and just be done with them but here here's the blue team all right so what does the blue team actually do well the blue team lets the debt collectors talk to you on your social media Oops. <laughs> so blue team security all right All right, here's a here's a here's what you can see. Blue team, the group responsible for defending an enterprise use of information systems by maintaining a security posture against a group of mock attacker, attackers, which is usually the red team. The red team is always attacking the blue team. We're trying to put things together. Thank you, congrats. Thank you for the congrats. Um, typically the blue team and its supporters must defend against real-time simulated attacks. So you remember that DevSecOps? Remember we just had Amy Rich on talking about DevSecOps and pipelines and CICD. This gets into that, right? So moving the Dev, the Sec, and the Ops together um, in order to, to do uh, DevSecOps, right? So now when we look at it, um, uh, um, number two, a re in a representative or um, operational context, or in this case, an exercise, and three, according to the rules established and monitored with help of neutral group, uh, I guess, I guess, refereeing the simulation or the exercise, usually the white team, right? So here to give another um, uh, definition, a group of individuals that conduct operational network vulnerability evaluations and provide mitigation techniques to customers. So you could be on a blue team internal for uh, for people, uh, for your core company and help them defend against um, what some, some problems and some issues that they may have, right? Based on the blue team findings and accuracy, they provide recommendations that integrate to an overall community security solution to increase the customer cybersecurity readiness and posture. Oftentimes the blue team is employed by itself or, or prior to red team employment to ensure the customer networks are secure as possible before having a red team test them. So you as the developer, you as the cloud engineer, the data engineer, the, the professional, you have a due diligence of including security into um, a pipeline or creating some type of uh, 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 pre-commit hooks for linting and testing, unit testing, and making sure that you're not leaking, excuse me, so sorry, that you're not leaking information anywhere, all right? So um, with that being said, let me go back to Sands right here. So with that, there are courses, security, Essentials and hacker 
techniques and then moving over to we have two courses here uh monitoring and detection intrusion detection and monitoring and operations and then they have a whole slew of nine courses here on cyber defense operations right blue team fundamentals uh open open source intelligence uh windows powershell security and architecture and engineering security architecture and engineering and defeating advanced adversary adversaries right so you can look and see like what you may be interested in right so we'll go there and then here you got industrial control where you can uh ics uh cybersecurity in depth and that's a 600 class and so forth right so again it's all a matter of how you see yourself now i know we have some people that are going for like the cissp where again you get into leadership essentials and controls understand um project management and how that relates to security automation and compliance, auditing, law and investigation. I'm going to tell you, you'll probably get into those, but taking that understanding of what that compliance is and what that policy is and move that towards a understanding policy is code, how to how to implement it, what, what those things are, and so forth. And D, you can drop the link to, in case somebody want to come up. Um, I know we got people watching in, in the chat, so, you know, just want to put that out there um now let me see that was that one we did that we did that and i didn't even, i hadn't really even started on all my stuff right all right so romantic all right let's get into it i talked about nvidia earlier so i don't know if i need to do that one all right, fewer, fewer Americans see their romantic partners as a source of life's meaning, and it's a signal of a big cultural shift. Drop the link. Let's talk about it. So, D, what are your thoughts? Says 9% of Americans saw their partner as a source of meaning, down 20% uh in 2017 dating during the pandemic is hard and couples had to confront unhappy relationships and quarantine paired with declining birth weight work rate it seems americans are finding fulfillment on their own terms all right that's what they say they say that from q research that surveyed more than 2500 americans found that 9% of the respondents cited their spouse or romantic partner as a source of meaning of life. That's <laughs> <a> drop. <laughs> just, I'm, I, I'm just putting it out here. Both married and unmarried adults felt this way, but the decline was the greatest among those who were married. In 2017, 31% of the cohort found their meaning in their spouse. But after the pandemic and y'all had to sit up there and smell that breath and nobody taking a bath and you just rinse it all over the place, <laughs> they're like, no. It says... Uh, but most people, 49%, said their family and children were a source of life, meaning it's possible they were including their spouse, but that, too, saw a drop of 7% <laughs> point since 27. Screw your family. 20% <laughs> of the respondents found friends as a source of mean, meaning only down by 1%. That means your friend can get out your face, you can go home, and they're not going to ask me for no money. You're not going to ask me for no money. <laughs> you know, they have this, you know, they were doing this, uh, you know, Will Smith was on his book tour and he was doing, you know, that little snippet where it was, um, you know, that they weren't, look. he wasn't depending on his 
it wasn't his partner's job to make him happy. Like mm-hmm. it was up to him to find his own happiness mm-hmm. and vice versa. Like if you are trying to and and this is one of those double edged swords. If or if you are trying to make your partner happy and be the source of this happiness, you're going to lose. It's like a, a losing battle. But then, you know, as being in service to your partner, you want to make you want to do things that make them happy, right? Mm-hmm. But is that the end all be all? Or do you have to do you guys have to crawl in each other's skin and live in each other's skin? You know, it's different strokes for different folks. It's a couple right now saying, hell yeah, they they watching this screen and they sitting in each other's skin and like, hell yeah. And then it's another Why they gotta couple be in each other's that's skin? sitting in two different rooms like, nope, you know. And then some people are just happy being single. Like, Why why they gotta be sitting in each other's skin, Dion? I mean, because some people like that. Some people just want to roll around in they, um, their partner's skin. You know, you you are skin roller. I'm not a skin roller. I I just I just I just like hey, you're over here, I'm over there. We cool with each other, little play, and that's it. I don't know necessarily if I if I need to crawl into your skin. I think you saw it. You think it's what? That's me. That's me slapping you. Oh, you can't be slapping me. I mean, it's it's to each his own. However, have things changed? Some people just don't want to be bothered. You know, with with all of that drama. You're more than welcome to come up and give your opinion. It says, meanwhile, some couples and spouses had to navigate living and working together for prolonged periods of time as lockdowns were enforced. For many, it was a make or break test of the relationship. (laughs) Those who, fell a lot into, of people. those who fell into the later category found that spending so much time together during the quarantine forced them to confront what they had been ignoring, an unhappy relationship. Nancy, I guess, Chim Tome or Chim Tobe, uh, a divorce lawyer and founding partner of whatever that is, told Insider last August that her firm had seen a 30% uptick in conflict checks and a process that ensures that the potential new client is in conflicting interest with a new or former client of the firm. Okay, so that means that the both of each, each, each party has tried to obtain them as a lawyer, their services. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, pandemic baby bust. <laughs> they got these names. So hey, that's where we at. So I hope y'all are out there happy in in this in this world. If you're not happy, tune in to Women in Linux every Saturday. <laughs> Yo, I'm happy ass at home. <laughs> tune in to Women in Linux every day, every Saturday. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to share this information. Don't forget to donate. If you don't have any time, if you don't want to donate, donate with your time. You can come do a meetup. You can come do a talk. You can even come press the little button. No, you can't. You can't come press the button. That's all I'm saying. You got options. All right? All right, on to the next subject. I found this one funny. And I think I think we should start a a a new a new um a new wave. Oh, did it not come up? Let me see. Yep. Trump's former lawyer Michael Cohen is making NFTs out of his prison badge. Let's get the prisoners who are inside an opportunity to make NFTs out of their badges and make some money, especially if they owe any type of child support or some type of restitution. Let's get them a shot, right? So let's get the the prisoners some NFT. Maybe they can take pictures 
and uh, make an NFT calendar or something like that because they be in there working out. I mean, look, we done seen all the messy stuff that come out out of the jail NFT. We done see all the jail stuff, you know, people done had full-blown relationships and stuff. I'm just saying. Y'all done seen all this. But again, think about it. If he's making an NFT for uh, for his own prison badge, why can't they do that for those that are also incarcerated to think of an, to create another way uh, to to make money? Now I have a question: <clears throat> Are they gonna have jails in the metaverse? Probably. It's gonna have to be some type of law and order in the metaverse. Is it I mean, gonna be like Westworld? When what is there gonna be a constitution? You gotta add Zuckerberg. Is it gonna be we three fifths human? That's why he's spending money. He's spending money on this metaverse. That's why he's been cashing out that stock. I got questions. Drop a com- drop in the comments and tell me what your thoughts are. What what is going on with the metaverse and and the situation with uh um uh, the law um nfts like can are they gonna can can people who are in jail can can they can they can they make an nft while in jail i mean they already make cell phone phone calls anyway right so what they're not supposed to that's not technically what they supposed to be doing well they get laptops too well i mean they might and they also get they also get technical training they do, but I mean, certain things they I don't think they're supposed to have, but who knows, you know. That's what I'm saying. Maybe another way to make money. I just found it interesting. Right? I don't know. Facebook jail, metaverse jail, only verse. I'm going <laughs> to stay on this side of the thing and, and deal with this universe. I'm just asking. No, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm responding to... Uh, no, no, I'm just, saying, I'm just asking. All right, this one I found interesting too. Let's get it. All right, big retail companies, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart are doubling down on their healthcare strategies. Here's how they're planning to compete in the $4 trillion industry. Big retail companies are, uh, they got a new strategy. Here's how CVS, Best Buy, Dollar General, Walgreens and Walmart plan to disrupt this space. No laws is open. See, that's what I'm saying. Mm -mm. CVS is going into primary care. You get primary care from CVS. So what I'm not going to the Dollar General for primary care. (laughs) I I ain't got the Dollar General yet. I I haven't got they doing something a little different. And they got there yet. All right. So Walgreens formalized a big health care clinic and, and home care push. And Walmart is gearing to offer telehealth at its home's end on the approach to delivering care to in clinics. Um, big retailers refine their health care strategies this year as they have looked to compete with each other and new players. So let me ask this question right here. Just curious. You get heart attacks in the metaverse? Do you get STDs in the metaverse? Should Walgreens and Walmart and them be setting up for the for the metaverse on that? I mean, I know we're probably gonna have strippers in the metaverse, right? (laughs) 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 We gotta think about it like like what it is, right? So I'm just thinking ahead. Right? This is a four trillion dollar industry. Yep. April says she getting all her health care at Walmart. But D was talking about Dollar General. So let's get back to it. Big retailers. I mean, okay, so what kind of help I April, I'm trying to understand. Are you getting your pharmacy stuff from Walmart or are you going to get like a breast exam and um your annual in your primary well, care okay. doctor is well, over let's, there? Let's let's talk about that, D. 
why why can't why can't Walmart or Sam's turn into um getting where you can get your your health care at Sam's? Right. Why can't I go get my breast? I, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I've gotten my hearing checked at Sam's. They have an eye clinic there. You can go get your eyes checked. I mean, you can go get your nails done. I mean, they have the pharmacy they're in there giving you uh, shots for the vaccine and the flu and all that other type of stuff. I mean, my only thing is just like um, the, the big eye care places like America's Best or something like that. I don't want, I want a primary care doctor that's going to be my doctor. And every time I go to the doctor and they're going to look at my lady bits, it's the same doctor looking at my lady bits. It's not every time have, I go get my lady, lady bits checked out, it's going to be a different doctor coming you in don't and have trying to look at my lady bits. Like, you don't I don't, have I don't want it. I don't want to feel like I'm getting bargain health care services at, at Walmart. Because that's why I stopped going bits. to America's Best to get my eyeglasses. Like, I can't even. It's nobody have, consistent there. You don't have lady bits. I have lady bits. You don't have lady bits. You try to make it sound. I have grown day. lady parts. Okay, there you go. You got grown lady parts. You don't have lady bits. <laughs> grown lady bits, like I said. You know, they're you not grown. Lady yeah, bits. I don't want no everyday low price. Like it's it's too much, and you just. And so I think she, she in got, some she rural got, she got, areas it or something like that, that may be better because they might not have an influx of That's doctors what I'm saying. or anything like that. That's what I'm saying. But so, yeah, so so areas that are out that that can't make it in, they may need. You know, Walmart may be the only thing that's there, and so where they can do one stop healthcare shopping, the whole nine. I'm going to Walmart. I'll be back in five hours. I got to get my big lady parts checked out. Not lady bitch, my big lady parts checked out. And I need to get my teeth done, right? You know, uh, maybe even set up uh, a, 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 a working area where people can work and work on a computer there. I mean, I'm just saying they got a lot of space. Like Walmart and Sam's and Target and them have a lot of space in these areas that they could probably maximize uh some of the some of their some of what they have in those areas like there's no need to have have uh 90 90 000 water bottles all the way up <laughs> to the ceiling right oh, you're cutting up in the chat about this. <laughs> okay so april said primary dental optometrist lab work uh Specimen cups in the meat aisle. They great. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I could work with people without insurance, right? I mean, but again, I'm also thinking about uh, food deserts. I'm also thinking about places that have food deserts, and the only thing they have is maybe a, a, a Walmart or a super Walmart. And those people can't make it to other places or something like that. That's really what I'm saying. Yeah, and, about. I, and, I, and Mary, I understand it's it's it now the concept is more like a like a, a met like it's Walmart Medical Group, and they have their they're popping up like a Blue Cross Blue Shield over here. We have a Bayfront and things of that nature. But it's just you know when you initially hear about it, it, it is a little funny. But those are things that I would um, really really think about as as far as me going to any healthcare provider where they're with where they are how often will i see them because it's basically about trust you with these providers that you're building over time you you're trusting them with your health and so you you never want to feel like that you're being rushed through or someone's not paying attention to you um or you're not being heard i mean it's it's just so many things and like i said that's that's across any medical provider yeah and why that man is going up there to get them tires changed he can go <laughs> ahead he, said, check under both wheels yeah check under, <laughs> check, under, check everything check check everything so sir would you like to schedule your next appointment right yeah i'm with you a nutritionist walking that aisle Maybe even have a little yoga section in there. You know, hey, I'm with it. All right, so let me keep going. That, that was CBS going into healthcare. Best Buy is betting 
Um, it can help patients connect with their doctors from home. Um, so rather than own primary care, Best Buy wants to help patients connect with other doctors through virtual care. The use of telehealth, which is super huge, a lot of money being put into telehealth. Uh, Kathy, uh, <laughs> Kathy Wood is putting a lot into that uh, with telehealth. Telehealth surged during the pandemic as patients and doctors embraced each other online to avoid spreading the virus. Best Buy had an opportunity to capitalize on the trend and closed a $400 million deal in November to buy Current Health, a company that created remote patient monitoring technology that includes a wearable device to monitor vital signs, light temperature, pulse rate, oxygen levels, home and hub that can connect with hundreds of other uh, devices. I don't know if I want my 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 little device connecting with my uh I don't know I guess I could connect my device to my refrigerator, right? All right, Dollar General wants to improve healthcare in rural America and rural Americans. All right, D, this is your th uh, this is for you, for you and Dollar General. You gonna get your get your lady bitch checked at Dollar General? I might get my lady bits checked that out of there. But you know what? Let's okay, let's back up. What you know what? You know what they, they should put in, in some of these places because they have them in they have them in other places in matter matter most where you can put in um where you can put in um uh, uh a scanner like it's scanning your body. So when you walk in to scan your body, you just getting scanned all the time. See if you got lumps somewhere. Walk through, boom, done. That's what they got. All right, Dollar General in July shared its plans to become a health destination for rural uh, communities by expanding uh, its access to healthcare products and services. Uh, it hired Dr. Albert, Albert Wu from the McKinsey uh, Consultant to lead the charge as its first chief medical officer. Details on the discount retailers' healthcare plans are sparse, but the CEO that gave some clues in August, it told equity analysts that the company will offer services that rural customers didn't have access to. It may provide eye care, telemedicine, online prescription drug ordering, in which customers could come pick up prescriptions in the store. Uh, Dollar General Healthcare push. Uh, which will unfold over several years could be lucrative if the if that's the company bottom line and goal. Walgreens is pushing to healthcare delivery. Uh, Roz uh, Brewer, uh, the pharmacy giant Walgreens, just formalized plans to go on to go all in on delivering healthcare directly to patients. All right, it's a strategy that the CEO. Uh, Roz Brewer, uh, who joined in Walgreens in March, said they would drive the retails, retailers' next phase. So they're kind of deliver. It spent $5.2 billion to increase its stake in primary care clinic chain Vi uh, Village MD uh, to 60% from 30%, right? Let's keep going. Walmart is gearing up to do telehealth amid, amid slow health clinic rollout. And that was it. So again, we're talking about uh, you got to get these things checked out. We don't, we don't want you dying. You know, people die early now. Um, so we got to do better. Yeah, we all, we <clears throat> Yeah, we 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 need we need people to stay healthy and that live in rural areas as we keep growing as as communities keep growing, right? We keep getting further and further away from access. And so we need uh access in in rural areas. We need access and stuff uh for for a lot of things. Uh so you know, just just keep that in mind as we as we continue to grow. All right. Switching gears. <clears throat> so Google Cloud. Google Cloud reveals its infrastructure expansion. 
So Google Cloud, is, there are more cloud regions coming to the U.S. and across the world as Google tries to catch up to Microsoft, Azure, and AWS. They got a long way to go. However, even though they have a long way to go, uh, this looks awful for, for Georgia. They look bad. But you know they got a long way to go. Google announced uh, new cloud regions in Columbus, Ohio. So that means there's a data center there. Um, Dallas, Texas, that, that means a data center there. It means that's employing people. Uh, as well as new expansions across the globe to make apps run faster for local users. And I showed you earlier this year about the, the big uh, pipeline that's going down to um, uh, around Africa. Right. I, I showed you that right. Google may control the web with Chrome, but it's still third place in the run of following by uh, following Amazon, AWS and Azure. It's however reshaping the image and attempted to make its public cloud uh, more appealing than its rivals. Google Cloud is still not profitable, but brings in four point nine billion dollars per quarter. So five times for 20 billion a year for Google Cloud. I think you you take that that money with you, right? Did you say it wasn't profitable? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't profitable. They're like those little billions doing nothing. They not doing yeah. nothing, right? Uh, Google has uh, nine, 29 regions, eighty eight zones, twenty five regions, and seventy six zones. Oh, they're going to consist of twenty nine regions and eighty eight zones, up from twenty five regions and seventy six zones in April twenty twenty one. And then the ones that they're doing, the new Tel Aviv region scale up as to regions in Warsaw, Poland, uh, I guess, Delhi, NCR, India, Melbourne, Australia, and Toronto, Canada. Right. So they're, they're moving, they're doing their thing. So that's expansion there. That means data centers, that means jobs. Right. That's how I look at that. And you can always go on their, on their website to check out their jobs. All right, another one, uh, Oracle is doing something as well too. All right, Oracle is expanding into AI. Where my boss go? Oh, it's over there. Let's come over here. Oh, let's see, we did not, oh, oh, I know what it is. It, it is this right here. Oracle announces new AI services for Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Oracle has announced the availability of Oracle Cloud AI services, a collection of services that make it easier for developers to, to apply AI services to their applications without requiring data science expertise. I also tweeted, not tweeted, I, I might've tweeted, but if you looked on LinkedIn, there are, and I, I think I posted this in Slack. There's free Oracle cl courses as well, too. Um, yeah, it's in Slack. Okay. All right. So uh, let me blow this up. The new six services help, and I can't see with that little error right there. The new six services help developers with a range of complex tasks from language to computer vi vision and time series forecasts. Um, so again, it's, it's without learning AI, it's how to use the services centered around AI what gives you the ability to use AI. So that's something you want to go take a look at, especially with doing machine learning and so forth, right? And AI. All right. I talked about this earlier. Let me get my thing over here correct. All right, virtual land, and I think a couple of people talked about it yesterday. Virtual land in the metaverse is selling for millions of dollars. I think you all have seen this. Again, we talked about it earlier. Do you have to pay uh, property taxes on the land? <laughs> Just curious. It's got to be great if you didn't have to pay property taxes, because I mean, at least the land would be yours. Perpetuity. What is that in perpetuity? Yeah. And D can drop the link so you can read more on it. And I can come back to it. 
All right. So Adidas enters the metaverse with an NFT partnership. Right. So it's time. It's it's time to enter a world of limitless possibilities. Said the staff behind the world-renowned sports clothing line on Thursday announced it was entering the metaverse in collaboration with board with the board eight yacht club g money nft and punks comment in an article posted on adidas mobile app the developers behind the innovative initiative not innovative the initiative said that said the following uh this autumn adidas know known for celebrating ideas at the bleeding edge of originality is settling in a frontier of creativity the metaverse i'll go there to see every one of its inhabitants thrive. So creating trails, or they're going to be creating mountains, parks, uh, get your shoes to go hike, so forth and so on. So here we go, leaping in. This is from their story. This is their, their video. <laughs> Are you gonna be? Are you gonna? Are you gonna have time for the metaverse too? Uh huh. Are you gonna have time for the metaverse? Uh huh. What you gonna do with the? What are you building in the metaverse? Number one. I'm taking pictures of the cars, so that's gonna be NFTs. And, and you wait till I get the the truck to shoot the flames. I did that one early. And and so again, what are you building in the metaverse? Are you gonna have like a home there and like you know Tammy Ranch or something in the metaverse? Uh, I'm I'm gonna have everything that I grew up with in the '90s. Yeah. Everything, every place I went in the '90s. Oh, so you gonna have like? Are you gonna have like your own little city and village? You gonna have strip clubs? And everything colleges? from the '90s strip clubs and Kaya, and Kaya, uh, oh, Re retro village is gonna be is the name of my my city it's your, oh, okay so you're gonna have a whole village a whole city yep okay. retro city let's go with retro city okay it's gonna be debaucherous in my city yeah the debaucherous That's what they're gonna be doing in your city. Nah, they're gonna be they're gonna be making it clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 31 to 17, Alabama. Alabama just throwing the ball all over the place on with, with UGA. They just like it. They look like the Falcons. All right. So Uber and Lyft are hiring for thousands of jobs. Here's what the companies pay for on the roles in on the engineering side, the legal side, the strategy side, and the finance side. All right, jobs in senior engineering management make upward of two hundred thousand. All right, y'all should be able to see this. A senior engineering manager pulls in about two eighty three a year according to the compensation data compiled by insider the other senior level technical jobs at uber and its rival lyft pay well above two hundred thousand. a software engineer in washington states makes two hundred and fifty thousand. a senior insurance counsel for uber in california makes two hundred and thirty thousand. the high salary echoes challenges on both uh on either on other side of Ubers and Lyft business, businesses, both companies have been facing shortage of drivers and other con contract workers. And that sounds like they're getting getting ready to gear up for 
having autonomous cars. If you ain't gonna drive, then we just gonna we not gonna die. We just gonna adjust, and we're gonna start having autonomous cars. Uh oh. All right. So let's get down here. It says. Uh, this is especially challenging in a work from home environment where employees may be willing or willing to switch jobs or work multiples. Uber has seen elevated attrition uh, this year and addressed the problems in the all hand meeting. Uh, Uber and Lyft have thousands of open positions posted. According to a recent review of listings on jobs website, the imbalance between demand and supply has paid off for employees and not just in the engineering field. For example, a data science in California for Lyft makes 190,000. A marketing analyst at Uber makes 125,000. Inside of pull these numbers, let me see. It says, once you're done taking an insider salary database to see, oh yeah, if you wanna check out Google, Twitter and Amazon, right? But here we go. Engineer manager 196 to 250, data science 137 to 220, a, a partner engineer 195. And these are just base salaries. This doesn't inc include equity. This doesn't include um, everything else, right? These are just base salaries. These are not total comp. All right. Um, here over at Lyft 190. 220, 165, again, base. You have to include your stock options and your and your equity and bonus and so forth. So that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother beast there. All right. So Uber engineering and data and product design, uh, a global head of service design, 277, uh, senior project uh, product manager, 122 to 235. Machine learning 203, full stack engineer 241, engineer manager 196 to 283, uh, technical program manager 183 to 283, security engineers 185, um, Uber 270 on the senior, recruiting manager 180, manager IT risk management 160. Um, a global program lead 130. And they got a lot of jobs that they're posted here. So I'm just trying to get through. Uh, performance marketing manager 124 to 181. And they just got a lot of jobs. So again, they're on a hiring blitz. It didn't say if the jobs were in person or remote. I think most of this is remote. So I will go check it out um, and let me know. All right, so next up, yeah, I did the debt collector. Oh, yeah. This one. And and let me know if you want to come up, D-drop the link. Nissan, yes, the link has been dropped. Okay, Nissan revealed four futuristic electric concept cars, including an adorable little pickup truck. That's their little pickup truck. Nissan announced a massive $17.7 billion push into electric uh, vehicles over the next several years. All right. This is what they're proposing. Let me blow that up so you can see what it looked like. That's their pickup truck. That's the convertible. Looking like an old uh, Gerardo. Gerardo, is that how you say it? Lamborghini. And that looked like a Mini Cooper. Uh, the chill out concept SUV seems to be the one closest to an actual vehicle you can buy. That's the concept car. The crossover shape. Looks a lot like Aria Nissan forty-seven thousand electric uh, SUV that had that hits the U.S. in twenty twenty-two. Uh, I don't like those wheels. And still, some some more out of their elements, like the Tron style stripes in the back. 
a, a full glass sunk a full glass roof I don't know how that's supposed to happen at when you go to it and get in an accident or something hmm. I have questions on that and this is what it looks like on the inside it doesn't look cozy unless you can put your feet out but it's a concept but this is what the eqs is kind of looking like see you can put your feet up but that's a self-driving one right yeah it's, it's electric vehicles i guess you get the option no, no, really. it, there it is yeah that does look like a, like a little mini armor truck <laughs> uh with a completely flat floor swivel seats and a tall roof the hangout is supposed to be an extension of the personal workspace where people can spend time and work on the move wow nissan tees they feature that turns the hangout into a little movie room so you can have turn around and y'all can watch a movie in the car I see this being on Pimp My Ride. I don't want to unplug nothing in there. The boxy concept clear, clearly takes some inspiration from the Nissan Cube, the toaster shaped uh, SUV Nissan briefly sold in the US. And here is the pickup truck cut out in the back. It's a two seater and it's built to go off road. That's what it looked like on the inside there with the dash. And I guess if you put the, the hood on, that looked like that looked like the, the head of Predator. I was gonna say that's like a roach. <laughs> that that looked look like, like a like a high performing roach. It looked like the head of Predator. All right, so that's the truck. And then here's the convertible. Max out feels like the concept that's least likely to see the light of day. Uh, it's a low slung convertible focused on driving performance and handling. And this is what it, the concept is. 17.7 billion putting, been put into this. That's a lot of that. Seventeen point seven. I I went. I got through everything because I went through some stuff this morning. I'm glad I did. That I got. I, I went through some. some. <laughs> I agree. Agree to you for they are hideous. Hey, this is what they're going after. See, I don't. Know, but you know, people are here just you know designing their dreams. It's just a concept. You know, what is going to come to the showroom might be something totally different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One other thing. So I was looking at this this morning. I got to do some more research on this. You may soon be able to swap your 401k for a lifelong monthly check. Oh. Annuities may be coming to your 401k. Last month, Fidelity Investments rolled out its guaranteed income, income direct platform, an option that can turn part of all your retirement savings into a stream of predictable monthly payments uh, for life, all without leaving your 401k account. This is an emerging trend, and the retirement savers can expect to see more plan providers offering similar options which add an important income component to your plan, experts say. The issue with 401k is that they were designed for retirement income. But most companies only offer investing strategies. Um, so let me see, let me skip that. So it's a great way, it's, it's great to see they now are increasing, increasingly have 
annuity options, or other kinds of ways to implement retirement strategy. Uh, the Guaranteed Income Direct allows employers that use the plan administration company services to select immediate income annuities from the insurers of their choice. Participants also can access Fidelity digital tools and retirement income educational resources. Nearly 8 million workers retiring, uh, nearly 8 million workers near retirement have 401ks through Fidelity, but their employer must choose the annuity option in order for it to be available for them. Right? And then they say, here's how an annuity can help. And they go into more about that. How many 401k plans offer annuities? Uh, there's There was only 10% that were offered, uh, yet Fidelity, with more than 78% of the workers are interested, right? Yeah, Linda, I was thinking the same thing. Like, it sounded like a reverse mortgage. <laughs> All right, so... It says, so if it's one of the major concerns, you may consider an annuity. Okay, let's see. No matter how carefully you plan for retirement, you won't know how long you would need to live off your retirement plans. For planning purposes, it's safe to take a conservative view, assume you will live into your 90s, but there's always a chance that your retirement investment won't generate enough income to live it, to live the retirement you deserve. So if one of the major concerns, you may consider a, an annuity. When an annuity an insurance company turns a slump, a lump of a lump sum of your savings into monthly payments. It says this gives you a peace of mind since you don't have need to worry about depleting your nest egg or seeing the assets depreciate. Right? And then they got a Charles Walt has an income annuity calculator or estimator. We find that a 65-year-old can turn $100,000 into 483 a month for the life through the through an immediate annuity. That's what they got. So be on the lookout for that. I had to do some more investigations on that, on what that's going to look like. Oh, let me see what we got in there. Those, I guess, uh, the vehicles are hideous. It's an L plus. No, nope. yep, yep. And and I think D dropped the link. That's all I had today. Are you sure? <laughs> Hold on, let me see what warm up two is. No, uh -oh. you didn't have a guess. Okay, so guess, are you getting on screen? Who this? Trey. Oh, okay, come on up. Are you getting on the screen? Are you going to use your camera? Or are you going to make us look like we got a struggle screen? See how, see how mean she is? Let me slap her for you. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to get some confirmation if, 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 if they're ready. What's going on? See? Uh-oh. What happened? Uh, you know, you say I'm mean, but I'm just trying to get some confirmations. What happened? Q4, I'm going to put you in timeout for that. Let me see. Put user in timeout. Yes. I swear. I know they get beat. I'm looking at it right here. It's right there. I see that. Oh. She not backstage, or no? We don't have anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, giving her a moment or he a moment yeah. to get back. Yeah, I'm not sure if he or she. I apologize in advance if I, I used the wrong pronoun. And um, I'm just going back through the comments in regards to the healthcare. They say one thing about Walmart is that you don't need insurance. Well, none of the healthcare providers need insurance. They're going to make sure that you're going to pay them before you leave there. So you can go anywhere without insurance. You're just going to have to pay uh, cash. Friend B, what's going on? I 
Ah, uh, okay. Too much feedback. Oh uh, no, I, I, it, I, I've, I've had this since October, and and um hooked it up. Tam is an Amazon gadget buyer, and so she'll have a lot, lot of gadgets that she want me to work and hook up. So I'm, yes. I'm so she was she, supposed what to. What else did you get yourself? You got oh she got her a uh, what did you get a heated water bottle. Mm -hmm. She got some random stuff. Yeah, I got a heated water bottle. So when I go to brush my teeth, I, and I use my um, little device, I want my water warm going across my teeth. Yeah, she's had that little gadget for months. It's been sitting in the box for months. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, she gets slapped. I know, and, just evil, just evil and abusive, terribleness. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. Anybody else you, trying to come up before? That's what's gonna um, happen when you come to my city. We hit. <sighs> I don't know why y'all be trying to hang with Tam. Uh, well, that's what. Oh, I, I mean, I can't do like O'Shea Jackson be doing. You were like booty clapping sound, booty cheek clapping sounds. I don't have that. What'd you say, D? I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea. What you have no idea about? What's the problem? Hey, but, Fran, how you doing out there? <laughs> I know, right? They come for ha right? This is exactly what they are. But no, um, also, um, we'll probably take, uh, I don't know, should we take the last week off for December? What do you think, D? Do we need the last week off for December? Let's get, let's get, let's get the audience uh, uh, drop of one. Do drop a one if you think we should take the last week of December and drop a two to be like, nah, I keep going. One, one to stop, two to keep going. One, What's so crazy stop. about all of this is it really doesn't matter if it's taken off or not because she's so impromptu about stuff. Like, I want to get on the line. And I'm like, I'm busy. It's getting kind of mixy here. We're getting kind of no, mixy. It, it, does, it really doesn't matter. Four. It's not one scheduled anyway. It, you got four so far. Thank you. Yeah, one to recharge. One to recharge. Oh, okay, April. It can run around 30 to 40 per visit. And I guess those are for the services that you had uh, listed out before. Oh, that's not bad. Let's see, two. Mm, how many twos? We got? Oh, the bell. You just keep doing twos. <laughs> two to keep going. Well, friends say take a break. Mm -hmm. It's that's not just Fran want to run these streets. That's what she want to do. <laughs> They don't know. I go into hibernation around the holidays. And Linda just being messy. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. But as you heard, we don't get no breaks. My eyelids, I'm wide awake and they looking like they half closed already. But my eyes always look half closed too. I, you just see my, you just see cheeks for me. But again, uh, uh oh, we got somebody on the stream. Well, you've been, I mean, you've been already in the streets. That's why you over there sick. I'm not sick. It's naughty. What do you think, D? Do we need the last week off for December? Let's get, let's get, let's get the audience. You got to turn uh, something down it. over there. Do, do drop a one. Oh, you got to just mute a D block. As we get it in. Just mute it till she get it together. That's all. One, 
One, you can mute it. There you go, D Block. You, you, you got to just mute it till she find out where that sound is. But we're gonna give we're gonna give Trey uh, a, a a clap. Um, let's give her the the clap. Oh, hold on, I gotta put it back in front so y'all can hear. Hold on. It does. It really doesn't. You did you figure out which one it was? No, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> She's like my hair. I know, right? You got to get it together. My hair. <laughs> What's going on? Is this the right angle? Let me get my lighting together. I know what. Well, <laughs> oh, no. uh, you, you got, got yourself it. on mute. I can't unmute you. You put yourself. You got to unmute yourself. Okay. Yep. Got it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No echo. All right. Cool. There you go. How you doing today? <laughs> good. 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 Welcome I had to, to eat street. dinner first, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> we out here starving. I'm on. Nobody, a, I'm nobody on a smoothie. wants to see that in action. So. <laughs> <laughs> You, you thought my is it UCQ4? I thought your eyes were like that because of the cannabis air freshener. Okay. <laughs> she don't need none of that. Congratulations again to me. Thank you. Yeah, Thank that's you. awesome. Yeah, it was it was it was a struggle. I pushed it out and pushed it out and procrastinated and procrastinated, and I was like, "Damn, I can't push it out no more." This it. <laughs> so yeah, you gotta go in and do it. But I'm a, I'm gonna sign up to take some more exams. Um, and so forth, get a little bit more uh discipline on my on my on my schedule to study. But again, it's like you know, doing the lives and studying and working, yeah, and creating courses and then teaching, you know. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot. Yeah, I had I had I had I had someone ask me like, oh, when do you have time to do anything else? Or like you just gotta fit yeah. it in where you can, and it's yeah. so it is what it is. Where are you located? Philly. Okay, yeah, Philly. Yeah. All right, cool. So, just really quickly, I know you gotta get back, but the the keep it techie you did today, or mm -hmm. with keep it techie, mm -hmm. that's where I heard you talk about the um, uh, setting up AWS, and mm -hmm. I just did that two nights ago, and it kind of mm -hmm. like forced me to go into PKK something I can't recall. I'm on Microsoft, not a Linux machine. And I was so glad you made that comment because I was scratching my head until two in the morning saying, why does it keep forcing me to this? So but thanks for that. <laughs> That's why it's good to watch everything you do. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we got to get back to what what's true and dear to my heart is, is the, is the live training, right? Yeah. That the live training is, these are cool. Yeah. These are I, right, but the live training is where it's at for me. Yeah, where you where y'all can sit down and you can whip out your terminal. Here's the steps. Here's why. Here's how. Here's what we need to do, and so forth. Like that's where it's at for me, um, because I think you get more value out of that uh, when you're when you're doing the training. Yeah, and when and when also you get a chance to see me make mistakes. Like I'm not perfect at all. I'm 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 never gonna tell you I'm perfect, but I I I know how to, you know, walk it back, get out of the situation, and then keep moving, judging forward. So, um, that's that's where I'm at with, with a lot of the stuff. Yeah, we appreciate you. That's I, mm -hmm. that's the only reason I'm on screen because D really urged it the other night, and I'm like <laughs> I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> get <with> it. <laughs> we we want to see you. We want to see who. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of hard when all we see is just the people in the, in the chat, right? And we will never see nobody. Yeah, uh, it's lonely almost. Yeah, yeah, it's just like okay, man, that who am I talking to? Is this a man? Is this a woman? Is this a right. child? Right, right, right. <laughs> it's definitely good to connect. But also yeah. going doing the live training when we're following uh, along and we're it, if it's documentation as well to run into bumps into the documentation that needs to be corrected and, and and finding that stuff out. So and it gives chance it gives people a chance to follow along and click along as we 
we discover different things because sometimes the interface looks so foreign. And then once you're in it, you're like, why did I hype myself up to be all bad? <laughs> like, it's not that hard. Yeah. I was I just, just thinking about that metaphor. It's like thinking about that metaphor, like how do you eat an elephant, like one bite at a time? Mm -hmm. I've just had to like pull out notebooks, like, okay, one bite at a time. That's yeah, one bite at a time. Do. Yeah. Yeah. I know Tam one day she was just like, see if you can install Terraform. And I just went on there to Terraform, their one on one, and followed along. And I'm like, hey, I'm I'm running into this problem. I'm running into this problem. And she's like, it might be a bug. But she at that time she was working on a project at work and it was it took months for them to figure it out and it wasn't anything on her company's end it was on terraform's end and by them going through that um the troubleshooting they were able to fix some things on their end to um that was critical to their business as well so you know a lot of times when you guys think you guys hit a wall it might be something wrong with the provider. Yep. And I'm actually working on, on something right now. Let me see. Hold on. Yep, one bite at a time. Hold on, let me let me one bite at a time. And I, and 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 let us know if we do a good job at explaining things as well. Um, we do one on ones and a lot of times um people just want to know where to start. Again, there's no clear path to any career like you might just be going everywhere but do we do a good job of, of explaining things and breaking them down to sizable chunks where you can digest and get things done um from your your things to do list so you can put a one in the chat if we mm -hmm. do that or if we need some work on that um i know from our um our survey we have a lot of newbies and so we will definitely be providing some um more uh beginner friendly things because you know Tamika is a little advanced and i mean i don't care no where way. you're at in your journey she's just gonna throw you in the fire and figure it out but i know it's like I for me you sometimes you have to go back to go forward so it's gonna throw you in the fire that's, that's not what we do around here i just introduced you're not gonna you. get no gooey around here you're not gonna get no good when you you're going straight right you're, going, you're not getting share, share no, my screen right around now. here you're going straight to the red hat share, you're, share not, my no, screen. you're not getting no nothing fluffy around here you don't do nothing fluffy. Share my screen no gooey <laughs> <laughs> nothing fluffy but i do have a gooey behind here so remember i did that live the other week all right so this is how digital this is how digital ocean works all right, so Digital Ocean from the command line is looking for an actual the actual uh, um, variable to not well it's a variable to be set but it's a token um, and I think this token should work if not I'll create another one and I'll put it in here but anyway before I was showing you all this is my Kubernetes cluster that I'm going to deploy Here's my main.tf. I'm only going to deploy. Let's make this will and change this to Saturday. And then um, let's also, we can keep in that, in that region. We'll deploy three. We, we got our tank set up. And this is just strictly to deploy a Kubernetes cluster inside of DigitalOcean. Now, how do I know where this stuff came from? Again, if you go Terraform, Digital Ocean, and you go here to the ter to the Terraform registry, you can literally highlight, cut and paste this in there. But um, let's go to the resources because I want to deploy um, a Kubernetes cluster. So it's dig Digital Ocean Kubernetes cluster. And then they have node pools. So I'm just deploying the cluster. I'm not doing the node pools right now. We'll come back and do the node pools. Uh, but here I'm deploying the cluster. If I want this cluster to, um, the node pools to auto scale, I'll, I'll, I can put in auto scale into, um, into here. Say I just set auto scale to be true, right? And 
deploy a minimum of one node and a max of five, right? And so they give you examples of how to use this. Remember on that live where I talked about the, um, let me jump down here, the arguments are inputs and the attributes are outputs. So those are inputs. And if you keep scrolling now, I missed it already. Let me scroll back up. Attributes, these are the outputs. So inside my output file right here, well, I need to save that. I'll go to output. Um, you see I have, and I need to, everything in here that says wheel, I need to change that to um, tat, because that's what that is. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Undo. Why did that do that? Put percent S, uh, wheel. Well, let me double check that. Main dot deal. Will Wednesday. Oh, okay. Okay, the name is just real set. So we're fine. I don't need to change it. All right. So let's go back to the output. Um the output is oh you could have stayed up, Trey. You could have stayed up. So you get live and direct. Cause then I can ask you questions. Why you always asking me questions? Right? So then you can say, um, here I can get the output. Right? So here you can see here I can get the ID. I can get the cluster subnet. But I also got the cluster, the output of the cube config. So if you scroll down, here's the cube config. Cube config. And I may need to do cube config underscore dot zero. I think I did that. Yeah, cube config underscore, yeah, cube underscore config dot zero. So it's going to give me output about the cluster. All right. So we're, we're good there. So now I'm going to do a Terraform initialize because I want to go grab the latest and greatest uh, from the registry, the, the latest version of, of digital ocean. Um, um, provider plugins and then initialize my back end. My back end is set up locally, so I don't have a back end in the cloud, so this is local. Now I'm going to do a Terraform plan. Right? So now everything that has a plus sign it's going to go out and create um, out in digital ocean. It's going to create this uh, my ID uh, or I got high availability, high availability set to zero. I mean, set to uh, false. I can change that to true. Um, it gives me my my this the subnet. It tells me what region is in. Here's where that will set shows up at. Um, here's the tanks that I have set up as as well too. And here's the node pool I got set up as three. And I don't have it set up to auto scale, but I can hop into node pool on here inside my stuff, inside of main.tf. And inside node pool, I could put auto scale. Um, I can do auto scale equal true, right? And now let's do a plan again. All right, so now when we come back up in here, we'll see auto scale change to true. Another thing that you need to do is uh, do a Terraform uh, format and so that it formats the output and gets everything line uh, it formats all the .tf files and gets everything in the right format so it's clean right clean code right and easy to read all right so now I have my I have my main.tf which is what I'm going to deploy I have my output I have my provider which I won't show at this time um, and then I have my variables. Let's go look at my variables. I don't have anything in there, but I can put stuff in there. Like if I want to get things that are hard coded in there, like auto scale or whatever the case may be, I can make those variables and put that in there as a variable. All right, now let's do what we call a Terraform apply. I've seen the plan. Now let's apply. And I'm a dash dash auto dash approve, so I don't have to answer the question yes or no. All right, so now, all right, okay, it's telling me, okay, 
Let's look and see what this error is. Uh, minimum. Let's see. It says error creating cluster. Blah blah blah. Validation error. Organizable dot min nodes must be greater than or equal to one. So let let's go back into our main dot tf. Right. Um. Note pool is note count is three. Let's look and see what there what that what else I can put in here that is talking about. Um, I guess uh, I do have a note pool set up. All right, let's go back to the error. And I had this working the other day. I think it may be my um, I think it may be my uh, my 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 token. But let's see. It says validation error. Worker node pool specs minimum nodes must be greater than one. Hmm. Let's look and see in my digital ocean file. Let me look over here and make sure I have a working uh, API. Because I'm thinking that may be it too. Let's see, it was created 10 days ago. And let me do a tab on this one. And let me pull this over. And let me see, let me look at my provider.tf. I'll create a new token. I'm going to see if that handles it. Because I, I could have swore I got rid of the, the token. Um, New, we'll call it new set. And I'm generating, I'm generating a token. Give me one second. And let me see if I get this to work. Inside of Digital Ocean. Oh, this right here is just me finishing, go, going over what I did. Uh, I don't know, one of the lives I did, Wednesday or Thursday, one of the lives that I did. We're just going over um we're just going over uh building terraform uh, using terraform to build out a, a kubernetes cluster let's do a plan should be talking to kubernetes yeah and it's it's gonna cry here and hit yes it's gonna cry and it says the nodes the worker nodes what worker nodes? Let's go find out what that is. Worker nodes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me go back over here to Kubernetes. I'll pull this back over. And then let's go look at the registry. And then let's do a control F and look up worker. Let me see what happens when I take the auto scale out. Required size. Okay, let's take the auto scale out. Let me see if that matters. If I get the same results. Let me just comment it out. I got a note count of three in there. That should be enough. Auto dash approve. It was the auto scale. So for auto scale, there's a requirement for worker nodes. All right. So now if I come back over here to Digital Ocean and under Kubernetes, we should now start to see that my Kubernetes cluster is being built. So now let's go back over here to auto scale. Auto scale had a requirement. So under auto scale, I guess I have to set the min and max nodes if you do auto scaling. That's probably what that is. That I have to specify what the min and the max nodes are. So we're going to take that, right? We're just going to grab this here. And what we're going to do is we're going to finish letting that build. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And so I have another terminal open. 
and in the main.tf, I'm going to add um, the min and max nodes uh, to that. And um, let's see what happens after this is done. Baby. I think it takes a I think it takes about ten minutes to build or so. But as you can see, it's it's building, and then I'll get my outputs, and those outputs should give me an ability to log into this cluster. And if I log in this, into this cluster, then I can um. Once I log into this cluster, I can once I get the credentials to log into this cluster, I can then um deploy my application so if i had a web app that i wanted to deploy or anything i could do that from right from here right so yep so Ter i'm using terraform with digital ocean um the easiest one out of all the clouds to learn is probably digital ocean they've expanded their model it's really set up for the person that just got a small company and want to run something, um, start some stuff. So that's what this is. So this is where that goes into. So I just I just want to showcase this to you uh, about if you want to learn Kubernetes, you can learn it in Google Cloud. You can learn it in, in AWS. You can learn it in GCP. Um, you can learn it in Azure. I think the easiest one is probably GCP and Kubernetes. You just click on it and it'll, it'll walk you through the steps in order to do it and you'll be well on your way uh, when it comes to uh, Kubernetes. And so here you can see it's still building, right? And it's gonna give me outputs of what the cluster subnet is, what the cluster ID is, and then the cube config information, right? And that's really what I wanted to show, that uh, what I found out that the, the, what, what was the problem. And then on my other little screen, whenever I whenever this gets done, uh, I'm gonna I went ahead and added the min and the max nodes because we had auto scale set to true, so you have to set the min and the max nodes. So I left the node count at three and I added the min and max nodes, um, and and go from there. So on my command line, I'm able to communicate to DigitalOcean. Well, when I created the token, that token allowed me as well to communicate to DigitalOcean through Terraform. So now I can I can go and communicate through uh, DigitalOcean, I mean, to DigitalOcean through Terraform and go ahead and, and build out whatever I want, right? And so um, when we talk about infrastructure as code, this is what I mean. We're talking about how to build the infrastructure, put it down into code, check your code into GitLab or GitHub or Jenkins, and then, or I should say not Jenkins, GitLab or GitHub, and then have some automation, uh, push that code out to communicate to that cloud provider to build out that infrastructure. But you, some fundamentals you need to have is understanding what you're attempting to do, what you're trying to do, draw out your architecture and then go from there. Um, here is a lucid chart and I, I need to go work on this tonight. But again, what does it look like to build out your pipeline, right? What does that look like? Um, let, me, let me go here. I know I have some more uh charts let me see mm, 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 mm. looking for my other charts do, do, do. oh here's one uh, it's a blank diagram but let's let's open this one up so as you continue in your development, all right, remember I always talk about the big picture. This is the big picture. Being able to draw the big picture out, take what you see right here and then turn it into code where you're using cloud formation or Terraform in order to create that infrastructure. 
So if you look on here, and let me see, where is this right here? If we look on here, uh, this is out in AWS. We have a VPC. They give you the subnet. They give you the public subnet. They give you a bastion host. They give you a, a network ELB. You have a gateway. And then you have another bastion host here set up. And these are set up in the auto scaling group. And you have a net gateway. You got avail availability zone A and B. And then down here you have your stuff that's on the private networks, right? So being able to under look at this diagram, understand what's going on with this diagram, and then build out stuff, right? And this is just an example, Kubernetes cluster, right? It's just an example. Let's see where our node is at. Um, okay, we're done. We we finished. So it gave me that my um my my cluster subnet it gave me my id that was out there now if we went back over here to uh our kubernetes page our interface let me hit kubernetes here and you will see that my cluster is up and when i click on my cluster now it's telling me that my cluster is up if I click on my nodes, it shows me my worker pool. It gives me some 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 CPU insights, some load, some memory. And then, you know, then I have some settings that I can set up for here, right? So in my overview, it says, hey, getting started, you want to connect to your uh uh your actual cluster. It drops down here and tells me exactly how I can connect to my cluster. So I can just cut and paste this into my browser. I mean, into my into my actual um, into my command line, and I'll connect up. It'll log me in and have me to have to create a config file and give me the ability to log into my my actual uh, Kubernetes cluster, and now I can start deploying apps. Yeah, I pull up GCP. Um, yep, Terraform and and um, um, Linux, I'll pull up GCP as well too. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah, all of it's on YouTube. Um, that I have. so let's go to GCP. Let's let's back up. Let's go to uh, Google Cloud. Let's type in Google. I'm on Terraform. Oh, this digital ocean documentation. Let's go to Terraform. Let's go to the registry. Let's go to providers right there. So let's go to registry Terraform providers. All right, that's fine. Let me click out all the way out. All right, so browse providers. I'm gonna go to GCP. All right, and now what I want to do is now I want to look for uh, Kubernetes. Why am I not getting what I want? This is the official one. It's the latest. Yeah, that's how I use the provider. That's the source code. Um, this is modules. Modules. That's not what I want. Let's go here. Uh, Terraform. Google Cloud. It's not cloud, but cloud, but cloud. All right. So here's the Google Cloud one. And if I look down here, and then if I go look for Kubernetes, I wonder if they have it on the cluster. Let me see, let's just type in Kubernetes. There we go. Um, so it's Google um, Container Cluster right here. And then you, We'll come in here basically they tell you exactly what you need you're going to need access to um, a service account service id you're going to google plus container cluster here's the resource and they walk you through all the stuff that you need here's a node pool just like you did with gke i mean um just like you did with digital ocean you're going to need some default stuff 
and then they get, get into their arguments and all the things that you can specify, like attribute inputs and outputs, right? Same thing. All right, so now let's go over here to cloud.google.com. If I hit the console, what do you want me to, sh what do you want, what did you, what you want me to see? Um, what am I looking for? Am I looking for GKE? Am I looking for, uh, what am I looking for here? All right, so if you were going to get one started, um, you would come down here and you would click on Kubernetes container engine and you hit clusters. But let's just say you don't want to use Kubernetes. You can just do right here because I don't even have one. I can do create. Um, I can do a standard autopilot, pay, pay per node, uh, Kubernetes cluster. Let's do a compare. Autopilot, you can see, you configure scale, you manage it and, and configure your, we want to do autopilot. I'm, I'm not, we're not doing nothing fancy right now. So let's create and let's go with autopilot. And so you tell it the name, I'm going to say, uh, Tim, chat, autopilot. Uh, hyphens, and the lights hyphens. Uh, we'll leave it in US Central, a public cluster. You can get into network options and so forth and so on, or you just take the defaults, advanced stuff. You can in, enable um, um, uh, uh, RBAC uh, role based um, administration. But we're gonna leave. We're gonna take everything as uh, as a default for now, and then I just hit create, and that's gonna take some time to create. And so you can see here it's creating. It's doing this thing. Um, it gives me the location, the version of GKE that it's running, um, some default stuff that I've taken. The security, like I can go in and customize all this stuff, the metadata, um, and then the features that are on by default, because I'm running autopilot, is the features or services, I should say, that get automatically turned on, right? So while that's running and doing this thing, we have our Kubernetes cluster over here in DigitalOcean right here so now if i grab this and come back over here to command line where i was at just gonna cut and paste that all right so now it's telling me that i i can go talk to my to my cluster because it dropped a config file in user to me read.q config so now i can do q CTL get nodes. I'm talking directly to the digital ocean cluster now. And let me clear my screen. I'm talking directly to the cluster. So you can see it's ready. It gives you the version. It tells you how long it's been up. And I was showing this before. If I want to do cube CTL get namespaces, or I can just do NS for short. I can get the namespaces. Now, if one, what if I want to get the pods that are running in a particular namespace. I can say Q get uh, pods uh, dash, I think it's NS, and then I got a Q dash public, I think. I think that's right. Yeah. I think it's just in from the namespace. I'm going to do it like that. So nothing in that namespace. Let's change namespace and let's change it to system. And now you can see I got a full set of nodes that are running out here. Now, if I want to go add more stuff to this, I can. If I want to go add more services running on this cluster, I can. Um, so it's going to interact the same way. So when we're talking about how is 
uh, Terraform going to interact with this? It's going to do the same thing. You're going to do an initialize, a validate, a plan, a, and apply to see, you know, pull in the latest and greatest plugins and back and create your back end. And then you, of course, at the command line, you got to set it up so that digital, not digital ocean, that Terraform has the ability to communicate. But now when you talk about how GCP interacts with Cube, you, you're just building, I just manually built this out. I can go write the Terraform code to build this out. But the same thing that I just did here with the Cube CTL and creating, um, um, creating the cluster and then now I'm logged into the cluster and I'm seeing what's out there. Now I'm ready to deploy an application. Now here's where security comes into play. Security we should be checking like, is this a secure setup? Is everything private that needs to be private? Uh, the config files, the whole nine, who has access to do what, who has the ability to do to do things on the on the actual site. So those are things that that we have to you know be aware of as well too, right? So just giving you what it's like, just a quick, quick overview. And I want to make sure I got that last little piece that we were working on. I didn't want to leave that um, that stone unturned that was bothering me as to why it wouldn't work. But I figured out why why it didn't work. The providers uh, thing needs to be inside the the digital ocean token needs to be in the providers, or you need to set it as an environment variable on your um, command line and pass that variable to or pass it as a variable or environment variable to your digital ocean command. Uh, when you do it, I mean, or to your Terraform command when you when you deploy it. Yeah, it looks just like EC2. Um, I think EC2 is a little convoluted, but that's just me. I refreshed my screen because I wanted to see if it was still spinning. Yes, yeah, actually, still spinning. Right. But you can see there's the endpoint right here that is 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 actually there. We go. So now we're officially done with. We deployed uh, information out there. I mean, not information, we deployed the cluster, right? So now if we wanna connect to this cluster, I need to get the config file in order to um, connect to this cluster. And if we wanna, um, I mean, I can, I can get here and they tell me exactly how to connect command line access uh, it, through uh, G Cloud um uh, right here so let's do that um let's open up another terminal well let's see that this should be fine here uh is that it doesn't like it the g cloud is installed i don't know why it's doing it that's interesting but g cloud is installed i may have to go to bash terminal Ah, uh, it's telling me it's not. It's all good. I'll set it up. It's all, it, I know it's installed, installed it a million and one times. But if I had it, if I had G Cloud set up, it would do the thing. So remember before I said that uh, we was going to check in with this cluster. So or we was going to make some changes to this cluster. And I said we're going to do the min and max nodes. For the auto scale to be true and the note count to be three. Well, you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna have to tear down my cluster. If I can do a terraform plan, everything that is a uh um a minus is gonna have to it's gonna have to take out. So let me clear that screen. So it see it says max nodes went from zero to five. Uh, min nodes went from zero to one. It got one change. Uh, it, it'll do an update in place because I'm only changing the auto scale. So it doesn't have to delete, which is cool. All right, so now if I do a, um, and, and um, apply that's auto that's approved, it's not going to destroy my cluster. It's just going to change some values in place. And it's showing you that what, what is changing in place. The max 
and the min nodes and then the auto scale go from false to true and you can see that it's already done and that's already complete now when i go back over to digital ocean um let's see let's hit kubernetes here and you saw from the output what what we had um let's see no it's still the same you can see it's been up 21 minutes you didn't see anything getting taken down uh, we got some insights in this settings. Um, I'm trying to see if they show where the um, stuff to set up will change, but I don't. I don't see. Oh, maybe it changed in here. Okay, I didn't go down far enough. Where? Um, and this is what I was talking about. I can change what gets installed. So I can. I can just click on this. And I get it. I can install an ingress controller. I can install Linkerd for monitoring and so forth. I just do one click install, uh, but nothing there. But the other thing I did want to highlight here, I can download the config file. But one other thing that was where is that at? the dash? I was looking for the dashboard. I just I just, I just seen it. Maybe some insights. So. Yeah, Kubernetes dashboard right here. So when I go to the Kubernetes dashboard, and you, this view is actually seen in uh, Minikube. This is the Minikube view, but I can see like I don't have no deployments, uh, the number of ports, no replica sets, the daemon sets, and it gives me the daemon sets that are deployed, the, uh, some deployments that are already out there, some pods um, and so forth. And it gives you a little bit more insight into about you know what's going on with the clusters, what well, the namespaces. So I can click on the namespaces and show me all the namespaces, just like I did at command line. Cool. All right. I hear D back there clicking away in the background. She ain't been on mute. <laughs> She's just a been a clicky, clicky smurf. Well, shout out to everybody today. And give y'all a round of applause. You know what? He gonna stop talking about me. I had we had an order that came in and it, it it was on hold, so I was trying to fix it. What order that came in? Um, we are out of a specific color, um, in a sweatshirt size. So I was trying to see what was our options, so I can uh -huh. get that out today. Oh, <laughs> uh, you was trying to do use Windows with Git Bash. Mm -mm -mm. You need to come on over to the Linux. I'm trying to help you out. You know, probably easier to you is you probably do better by setting up a virt you downloading virtual box and installing Ubuntu and then setting up your environment inside a virtual box, um, a Linux virtual, a Linux machine. Um, and then do everything from command line inside of that. Mm, or use that $100 digital ocean credit that's in Slack. Oh, yeah, that is $100 digital ocean credit in Slack. I mean, if you don't want if y'all don't want it, you know. I mean, it, yeah. Look, if it's beneath you now. <laughs> down, down here. <laughs> then, you know. <laughs> It was beneath you now. All right. So that's what I wanted to show. I hope you had a good a good time. I guess we'll go back and chop up the stream. Um, oh, is it we or you? Or me? Yeah. Dia, go back and chop up the stream. <laughs> so we can go talk about Kubernetes and digital oh. ocean and whatnot. But she probably not going to chop it up, though. You know what? I got a, a QNAP sitting on my desk that I've been trying to log into for, for two days. So um, maybe I'll have some um, sustenance in order to get me through the night so that I can get it because I, I'm out of bandwidth. I'm out, I'm, out of, I'm out of juice on this laptop. I might need one of those Apple M's. Ask me, do I care? <laughs> Ask, me. Ask me. 
That's me. Do I care? You all are welcome. It is five minutes left in the fourth quarter. The UGA is losing. They're going to lose their number one spot. Did Alabama lose a game this year, though? I think Alabama lost a game. It's just going to move us from one to two. I want them to stay one, but they, they, they're not going to come back. They took they down too much. It's all good though. It's been real people. Have fun. Be safe out there. Um don't catch the new virus. I, I heard it's already made it to the States. I think it was in New York or somewhere. It said they had been it had been around for a while before they caught it. So it's no telling how many people have it actually. Um, so y'all be careful out there. If you shake somebody's hand, make sure you get some um hand sanitizer in your hand. It's gonna need more than that. <laughs> <laughs> don't need more than that hand sanitizer. I'm just saying it's the Omarion. Yep, that's what it is. Yep. Yeah, I think it was already there too, and I don't think I I think more people got exposure to it than what they let know. Probably. That's what I'm thinking. And that ain't me. Well, they call it Tim McCrone. <laughs> they ain't gonna put that on me. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm gonna get her a shirt that say Tim McCrone. Get, let's give Q4 some slack. She got the, she got the Tamar Crown right now, too. Let's give, let's give uh, Q4 some slaps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Out there rolling in the streets with Fran. Got the Tamar Crown. Fran, you got the Tamar Crown, too? Are you over there, Stuffy? No. She been in the streets. She in the streets now. I don't mean she not, she not Stuffy. That's how COVID spread. The Stuffy people be in the streets. Dion. <laughs> it's what you gotta do to you. All right, people, we'll see y'all uh next week. Yep, we don't have nothing tomorrow. Um, we need to do uh we need we, y'all need to um y'all need to uh either put in Slack or on put leave a comment. On the 12 days of Christmas, what do you want to see? 12 days of Christmas, 12 days to Christmas. Like, what do you want to see in terms of tech talks? What are you I'm interested in? Ain't no breaks around here. I said the last week. I didn't say anything about now to Christmas. I said the last week. I don't know but, nothing about no 12 days of Christmas. What? Well, well, yeah, we're not paying you no mind. So, um, let us know what some topics uh, that you would like to see and like to have discussed. Um, and if you are out there getting your um, your drop medicine. Drop it in the comment section, actually. So that we That's what I said. Drop it, it in the comment section after, uh, after the show or in Slack, either one. Um, we're taking ideas. Uh, the, I guess we, we could do a, 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 a giveaway. For, for that the person idea the person that comes up uh with the idea that gets chosen uh we can get a get a mug from us you know mm-hmm. ship out and i um and make sure that you check the uh the youtube channel for topics that we've already covered yep so you get a you get a mug sent out from us um uh, for the topic chosen so got 12 12 days of Christmas, so I need some topics. I know what I want to do, but that may not be what you want to talk about. Or may it may not be what you want to see, so let us know. All right, everybody, be safe. Thank you for joining us. And see as always, week. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs>